Hello everyone, I'm Steve from Martel Training Group. I'd like to welcome you to our video, FAA Drone Rules, What to Know, Safely Flying in 2022. Our channel is all about safety and security education, so if you want to stay safer and more secure, you need to hit that subscribe button now. I am a retired New Jersey State Trooper and former paramedic. I am also a commercial helicopter pilot, private airplane pilot, and an FAA remote pilot. During my time in the state police, I was assigned to the Aviation Bureau for a number of years. I flew primarily medevac missions. Today, I'd like to talk to you about drone safety, operating your drone safely in 2022, because I know a lot of people are buying drones these days. They're very easy to buy. You don't need a license to buy them. You don't even need a license to operate them. So long as you fulfill nine requirements or follow nine rules that the FAA has put out on their website. That's what we're going to discuss today. I use two drones primarily for my drone business. They're both DJI drones. One is the Phantom 4 Pro and the other is the Mavic 2 Pro Zoom. These are great drones right out of the box. They operate uh, phenomenally whether you use your smartphone with the downloaded app to operate the drone or you pay a little extra and you get the smart uh, controller with the drone either way they're very easy to fly very easy to set up and you can do a lot with them the video and the imagery is spectacular so you can make a lot of great videos and images with these drones with very little effort however if you're going to uh, use the drones in any way, shape, or form to make money, you are going to need an FAA Part 107 license to do that. So today we're going to talk about the requirements that you need to meet in order to not require a license. So what this means is every drone operated in the United States falls under Part 107 with the FAA. Now if you fall, if you follow these nine rules or meet these nine requirements that the FAA has put out on their website, you fall under the exception. Uh, USC 44809 is the exception to Part 107, meaning that you don't need to get a license so long as you meet these nine requirements. That's what we're going to talk about next. Remember, following these nine rules keeps you, your drone, other people, and our airspace safe. Rule number one, fly for recreational purposes only or for enjoyment. There's been a lot of debate on this subject, but what it comes down to is intent. The FAA is going to see what is the intent of the flight. So for example, if you've shot a lot of videos with your drone for recreational, just for your enjoyment, and you have a friend that says uh, he or she is in the real estate, for example, and they say, hey, do you mind if I use that one particular video for my website? That, now I'm not an attorney, but that in and of itself would probably not constitute requiring a Part 107 license because your intent of that, making that video was for recreational use. Now, if you keep doing that over and over again and your friend has uh, is using it for their business and they're making money with their real estate business and they're using your videos as part of their marketing. Now I think you've crossed into that realm of commercial use or requiring a Part 107 license. It's, it's really a common sense thing and I think the FAA is going to fall back on what was the intent of that initial video. Some people ask, what about making video for my YouTube channel? I make a lot of drone video with my drone and I have a YouTube channel. Can I use my video for my YouTube channel if I don't have a Part 107 license? I would say in general, yes, you can use it for your channel. However, if you have a ton of subscribers and your channel is monetized, meaning you're making money with your channel and it's really a business, then I would say now you're in the realm of Part 107. You probably need a license to make those videos for your monetized YouTube channel. Again, falls back on the in intent of the video. Rule number two, follow the safety guidelines of a community-based organization or CBO. Now these are the, the, these have been around for years. These are the old RC or radio controlled clubs people would go to with their radio controlled airplanes or helicopters. 
what these organizations do is they you, you can join them or not but if you join them they have a designated spot where they fly they have designated uh, rules in place as far as how you can fly where you can fly how many people can be flying at once uh, they so you can go on their websites and you can see a lot of them have their rules published on their websites so as of this recording the FAA has not designated a list of CBOs that they endorse or that you could say I follow one in this list so in the meantime what you can do is they FAA has said that you can follow the guidelines the safety guidelines of advisory circular or AC 9157 B and that's on their website as well so you can go to the FAA website you can print out these guidelines and you can have them with you and if you're stopped by the police or the FAA and they ask you what guidelines are you flying under and you could say I'm flying under AC 9157B so eventually they're going to designate a list of CBOs that you can pick from and that's what you do you just pick one you go on their website you can join their organization or not uh, it's up to you but the FAA says rule number two is follow the safety guidelines of one of these CBOs. Rule number three, keep your drone within visual line of sight. That means you can never take your eyes off your drone. Now if you have what's called a visual observer, someone who's standing next to you or within earshot, you can use what's called first person view or they have goggles that you can actually buy to actually look through the viewfinder of your drone camera. So you're actually getting a first person view of your drone. Now using those goggles you're still supposed to have a visual observer with you who keeps eyes on the drone at all times now the FAA has said if you're going to use this FPV or goggles to fly your drone you should still be able to remove the goggles at any time and have eyes on your drone so that's important for avoiding hazards and also other aircraft that might fly into your zone. So for example, a news helicopter, a medevac helicopter may fly into the area that you're flying and you have no idea that they're, that they're approaching other than the fact that you can see or hear them. So uh, that brings us to rule number four, give way to and do not interfere with manned aircraft. So drones fall on the bottom of the list of priority aircraft that have priority in the sky. So the F way the FAA uh, handles this is the least maneuverable aircraft has the most priority. So for example, a hot air balloon would have priority over an airplane. So drones are at the very bottom. So you see or hear an aircraft approaching your zone that you're flying in, you need to avoid that aircraft. You need to fly out of the area. You need to land. Whatever you need to do to not interfere with that manned aircraft. It doesn't necessarily mean in the air. So if you land your drone on a runway, for example, and an aircraft has to divert or abort their landing because now your drone is in their way, that's also interfering and the FAA most likely will take enforcement action. Rule number five, fly at or below 400 feet above ground in controlled airspace only with prior authorization. So this is class B, C, D, and E. And you need prior authorization to fly in controlled airspace. You get the authorization through Drone Zone on the FAA's website or uh, any participating app such as Aloft, which is formerly by Kitty Hawk. Or before you fly, there are multiple apps that you can use to access the Lance service. Lance stands for Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability. So what that means is there are a lot of facilities, airports, and areas that ATC controls they participate in Lance which means they know for example a certain part of their airspace say maybe the southwest part of the airport they know that based on their runways and their traffic that uh, drone traffic is okay up to say a hundred feet on any given Tuesday through Thursday so what happens is when you file through your app for that location to do a flight with your drone, you may get immediate authorization through the app and through that Lance service. If you if the facility does not participate in Lance, then you need to go through Drone Zone on the FAA's website, which will obviously take longer. It will not be an immediate approval or denial. You'll have to wait. 
So it's important to understand any kind of flight restrictions. Also, I have to mention TFRs, temporary flight restrictions. They are areas of restricted flight that pop up from time to time. They could come up with little or no warning. The president comes in, a vice president, for example, they come in to do a speech somewhere. Wherever they fly into, wherever they're going to be, that the TFR will pop up there. They could be It could be 30 miles in diameter. You cannot fly in a TFR. If you do, you will be violated. The FAA will take enforcement action. Also, uh, other areas, say, for example, a stadium where there's a game going on might have a TFR up. So you have to be aware of these TFRs and avoid them. And you do that through apps, a Before You Fly app and also Aloft, which is formerly Kitty Hawk. Rule number six, fly at or below 400 feet above the ground in uncontrolled or class G golf airspace. Uncontrolled airspace does not mean no rules. It just means simply that the rules are different and that you may not need ATC authorization to fly in this airspace. I won't say that you never need authorization because you always need to check to make sure before you fly your drone. Again, I will point you to the apps. There are multiple apps available. Before You Fly app and the Aloft app are both great apps to use when uh, right just prior to a flight or in the planning process of a flight. Rule number seven, take the recreational UAS safety test or trust and print that out and keep it with you at all times. Now this takes about 15 to 30 minutes to complete. It's free, it lasts forever, there's no expiration, and you should only take this uh, course on a approved website. Uh, but this you need to have proof of taking this, passing this test with you when you're flying your drone. Rule number eight, have a current FAA registration mark on your drones that you're flying. Every drone over 250 grams or less than 55 pounds needs to be registered with the FAA. Now as a recreational flyer, you, have, you get the same registration number for all your drones. So if you have five drones, it's the same number. I would recommend using a uh, label maker. You print that out, you put that label of the registration number in an area where it's large enough to see. Obviously you don't want to uh, cover up any sensors of the drone or near any moving parts. It costs five dollars to register your drone. It's good for three years. And finally, rule number nine, do not operate your drone in a dangerous manner. This, for example, could be operating your drone under the influence of drugs or alcohol. So it's, it's simple. If you've had a drink or two, even one drink, don't operate your drone. If you're on medication for pain or cold medication, if anything, uh, you're taking anything that's gonna affect your performance, don't operate your drone. It also includes if you're sick. If you're sick and you're just not feeling well, don't operate your drone. It also means do not interfere with police fire or EMS at say an accident scene or a large fire scene. So you're gonna think about this. You're gonna have news helicopters. You could have a medevac helicopter flying in and out of the scene. Police, a lot of police departments have their own drones or are getting their own drones. They use them to manage the scene, to get an overall picture of the scene, take aerial footage of a crime scene. So you do not wanna interfere with drone operations or news, police, helicopters, anything of that sort. If you do, the FAA will most likely take enforcement action. That's it folks, so if you follow these nine rules uh, or meet these nine requirements when you operate your drone, you fall under the exception of part 107 and you do not need a license. However, if you do not meet one or more of these requirements or rules, then you no longer have the exception under part 107 and you would require a part 107 remote license for that particular flight. Now let's talk a little bit about getting your part 107 license. It's not that difficult to get, but you will need to prepare for the FAA uh, knowledge exam. It's 60 question test. It's on many different areas of knowledge, uh, weather, performance, aeronautical chart reading, uh, flight rules, airspace is big. So uh, as a pilot, as a manned pilot, 
I still needed to prepare for that test. I hadn't been flying for a while, so I still needed to prepare. Now, what you need to do is, what you should do is take a course to prepare yourself. Now, the Drone Pilot Ground School is a, uh, it's a great resource, uh, in my opinion. If you uh, sign up for a course for the class with, with, with the Drone Pilot Ground School, uh, it's very, it's a very comprehensive uh, course, and you can actually go on their website. I have a link in the description, and you can actually go on their website and try a demo of the course. Now they have, uh, there's advantages to take, a lot of advantages to take in their course. You have a lifetime access, which to me is is worth it right there because every 24 months as a drone pilot, you will need to uh, have a refresher course to recertify your license and you have access to this course for a lifetime. So the Drone Pilot Ground School, they uh, constantly update their database with questions and their information uh, on for current standards. So two years from now, when you're looking to refresh and recertify, you'll be able to log back into your account and have a refresher and you won't have to pay additional money. Now, they have a 99 plus percent pass rate, success rate, and they do offer a money back pass rate a guarantee. So if you don't pass, you can get your money back and they'll also refund your test fee, which is usually about $150 for the FAA. So you have to pay $150 to the FAA whether you pass the test or not. So if you don't pass and you don't want to retest for whatever reason, they will refund your money for the course and your, reimburse you for your test. They have a test bank of about 350 plus questions that you can study from. You can take multiple quizzes to quiz yourself uh, over and over again. And these questions are just like you'd see on the FAA exam, the same format, same type of information. You also have the ability to, to create a cram sheet. It's called a cram sheet. There's like 12 page cram sheet, which has main topics and concepts that you will need to know for the exam. So it's very easy. It makes it very easy for you to prepare and study for your test. Now they do offer support, phone support. You can leave a voicemail, they'll get back to you. You can email them, uh, they'll get back to you. So you have support with this course as well. Uh, at the time of this video, the course is $299. Again, I will have a link to their website. If you wanna go check it out, there's a lot of advantages to taking this course, uh, which too many to talk about in this video, you can see for yourself. But if you are gonna go for your 107, Part 107 FAA remote license, I highly recommend you take some sort of pre uh, preparatory course for the knowledge exam because if you're not a pilot and you have no aviation experience, it's very difficult to pass. Finally, folks, just remember that if you want to make money with your drone in any way, shape, or form, if you think you might want to use it uh, in any commercial capacity, whether it's inspections, roof inspections, tower inspections, just photography, you have a real estate business, you have a friend, whatever it might be, you will need your Part 107 license. Uh, so you need to keep those nine rules in mind. If you follow those nine rules, if you meet those nine requirements, you will uh, fall under the exception. You won't need a license. You can fly recreationally. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more videos on safety and security. Take care and stay safe.